So this, this conference will be broadcast at www.acu2020.org. It will be translated into 10 languages. Um, you can find uh, other contents on this website as well. Plus, uh, I'm here in Germany acting as a medical doctor of uh, Robert Kennedy, and I just would like to announce his voice is not related to any uh, virus or something. He has not COVID-19 something. It's a long-lasting physical voice disease, just, just to say this. So he is... Um, his health is very intact, and we are proud to have him here with us. So tomorrow there will be um, a very big crowding, like in the 1st of August. This was the biggest in Europe. And tomorrow it's going to be much bigger, because we are standing here all together to try to tell the truth to the people. I am Robert F. Kennedy, Jr. Excuse my voice, <coughs> which should get better as I talk. And let me explain to you a little bit about the journey that brought me here. I run the biggest water protection group in the world. It's called Waterkeeper Alliance. And back in the early 2000s, I was suing big coal burning power plants in the United States for discharging mercury. At that time, and my only concern was the impact of the mercury on fish and on human health of the human beings who ate the fish. Around that time, it came to my attention that there was also large amounts of mercury in vaccines, much larger exposures to children than any child would ever get from eating fish. And so we began to, I began to address that, and we started an organization that was trying to have a very limited scope, which was trying to remove the mercury from vaccines. Little by little, I came to understand that there were larger problems with vaccines. And the central problem, and the one we were most deeply concerned with, was that vaccines in the United States were not safety tested. They have an exemption that is not available to any other medical product. And that exemption, which most people cannot even believe, is an artifact of CDC's legacy as the Public Health Service, which was a quasi-military agency. And in the, at the time that the vaccine system, the vaccine program was launched, the purpose was a national defense purpose. And they wanted to make sure that vaccines could be quickly formulated and deployed in order to derail attacks by foreign countries with biological substances. So they removed the regulatory impediments, including the necessity to test vaccines, to safety test vaccines against placebos. And so my very narrow purpose in starting the children's health defense was to address this problem and get vaccines properly safety tested. Because if they're not safety tested, Nobody can tell you with any medical authority whether that vaccine is injuring more people than it is saving. And yet, as we continued on with this advocacy, it became very clear that there were other problems as well. Uh, there was problems with the corruption in our political system. The pharmaceutical companies had not only corrupted our politicians with huge amounts of lobbying money. They had captured the agencies that are supposed to protect Americans from public health threats. The CDC, the FDA, the HHS. They had captured the press in our country. A huge influx of advertising dollars, which had neutralized the press. And they had effectively subverted American democracy by neutralizing all of those institutions that the founding fathers of our nation had created to stand between a greedy corporation and a vulnerable child. The Congress had been corrupted. The regulatory agencies were captured. They had become sock puppets for the industry they were supposed to regulate. The press had been sidelined. And worst of all, 
They had passed a law in our country in 1986 that gave pharmaceutical companies complete immunity from liability. So there was no incentive for any of those companies to make vaccines safe. And little by little, we recognized that this was not just an American issue. This was a global issue. I came two years ago when I was arguing the Monsanto case, and I met my partner here, Santa Dupuy. And Santa already understood the connection that had taken me so long to formulate between toxics in our environment and the capture of our agencies and our political structures by those powerful com companies. Uh, she also recognized that pharmaceutical companies were the most powerful, more powerful than oil, more powerful than the chemical industry, and a greater threat not only to our children's health, uh, to all the institutions of democracy, not in the United States, but all around the globe. And I'm very glad that Tina Choi helped Senta to organize Children's Health Defense Europe. We are here today to announce, to launch the beginning of this organization. Uh, we've been very, very successful in the United States. Uh, we recognize that the pharmaceutical industry is, uh, is operating and capturing politicians and running governments in every nation on the globe. And if we win this battle just in one nation, the United States, we're still going to lose it globally. Uh, we need people of goodwill, people who have courage, people who have a, a, a nonconformist way of thinking who understand that we are being lied to, that the entire political structure today is, uh, is saturated in pharmaceutical propaganda. And we have watched over the past few years something that is extraordinary. We are at an inflection point, I believe, in human history. The largest and most critical inflection point that human, humanity has ever accounted. For many years, totalitarian and authoritarian states have used the power of fear to engineer compliance in populations. I grew up understanding what happened in World War II in our country, and during the Nuremberg trials, Hermann Goering was asked by the prosecutor, how did you make the German people comply? And Goering said, it's not just Germany. This works in any country, whether it's a fascist country or a communist country or a monarchy or a democracy. All the rulers need to do is to tell people that there's something they need to be fear fearful of, to point a finger at that source of their fear, and you can make human beings do anything you want. You can make them go to slaughter like sheep. You can make them obey. And during the same Great Depression that spawned Adolf Hitler, we were very lucky in our country that we had a leader, Franklin Roosevelt. And he said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. He understood that fear would drive us into totalitarianism. Well, the biosecurity agenda that people like Bill Gates and Anthony Fauci and Davos and all of these people who are running now the global economy, they have understood for years that they have a power that no totalitarian government has ever had available to it, which is the biosecurity. You know, in, in Hitler could point at the Jews and say, those are the big threat. We need to be frightened of them. And you guys, everybody else needs to obey so that we can fight them off. Other countries were scared of the Bolsheviks. In the United States, you know, our demagogues point to the Mexicans or dark-skinned people and say, we need to be scared of them, or terrorists. And, you know, all of those things get us to voluntarily give, us, give up, relinquish our human rights, our civil rights, and walk like sheep into the abattoir. But now they have a source of fear that is the most 
pervasive and all-encompassing power that they've ever had, which is the fear of pandemics. Governments love pandemics the same way that they love wars, because it gives them power, it gives them, the, it gives them control, and it gives them the capacity to, to impose obedience on human beings. And today we have an inflection of new technologies that give governments the capacity to impose controls on populations that have never been imagined before in human history by any tyrant in history. We have 5G, which has created a surveillance state. 5G is not here for your benefit. It's not here so that you can, it's gonna make your life better because you can download your video game in six seconds rather than 29. The only reason for 5G is because it allows these big data companies run by Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and Jeffrey Bezos to harvest our data, to listen to your conversations on your cell phone. They've always been able to do that, but there was no way for them to transport that data, to subject it to analytics, and then to monetize it and to, and to sell it. Bill Gates today is building a city in Arizona, 80,000 people, with a data center that will be able to take all of this new data, the data on your Alexis in your home. You think that Alexis is working for you? Alexis isn't working for you. She is spying on you. Your cell phone is spying on you. They have biometric facial recognition systems, your GPS. All the satellites that Bill Gates brags that his satellites will be able to monitor every square inch of the planet 24 hours a day. They're gonna know, and then they have another innovation, which is digital currency. And once they have digitalized our currency and gotten rid of the cash economy, they have absolute control over us because they'll be able to tax every transaction. The banks will be able to, uh, to cash in on every transfer of, of wealth, every transaction, no matter how minuscule, no matter how small, but also they'll be able to enforce obedience. Because if you're disobedient, they'll be able to shut down your bank account and starve you. And you'll have no access to cash. And many people argue that this pandemic was a pandemic that it was planned from the outset, that it's part of a sinister scheme. I can't tell you the answer to that. I don't have enough evidence. A lot of it feels very planned to me, but I don't know. But I will tell you this. If you create these mechanisms for control, they become weapons of obedience for authoritarian regimes, no matter how beneficial or innocent the people who created them once you create them, they will be abused. 100% guarantee that they will be abused. And all of the people who are out on the street now, who are arguing with, these, with this new imposition that we're seeing all around us, of authoritarian control, of people being told, wear your mask. And you know, I think everybody in Europe, everybody in Germany, everybody in the United States, if they were told, here's why you should wear a mask, here's the science that says it, it will help, here is the science that says it works, that you will stop transmission to other people, everybody would wear it with no problem. What we know is that we're not being dealt with honestly. We're being told, this is the science. But it's not, it's, people, it's, the, it's an appeal to authority. It's science because Tony Fauci and Bill Gates tell us it's science. We want to see the studies. We want to see the studies on hydroxychloroquine. We want to see the studies on whether the lockdown is killing more people than the coronavirus. We want to see real science and real risk assessments. And we are not going to take the word my father told me when I was a child. People in authority lie, 
And we all, if we are going to continue to live in a democracy, we need to understand that people in authority lie. People in authority will abuse every power that we relinquish to them. And right now, we are giving them the power to micromanage every bit of our lives 24 hours a day. They're going to know where we are. They're going to know the money that we spend. They're going to have access to our children. They're going to have the right to f f compel unwanted medical interventions on us. We, you know, the Nazis did that in the camps in World War II. They tested vaccines on gypsies and Jews. And the world was so horrified after the war that we signed the Nuremberg Charter. And we all pledge when we do that. We would never again impose unwanted medical interventions on human beings without informed consent. And yet in two years, all of that conviction has suddenly disappeared. And people are walking around in mass where the science has not been explained to them. They are, they are doing what they're told. They are orchestrating, these, these government agencies are orchestrating obedience. And it is not democratic. It's not the product of democracy. It's the product of a pharmaceutical-driven biosecurity agenda that will enslave the entire human race and plunge us into a dystopian nightmare where the apocalyptic forces of ignorance and greed will be running our lives and ruining our children and destroying all the dreams and dignity that we hope to give to our children. And the launch of this organization, Children's Health Defense in Europe, is a beachhead. It's an announcement to the world that we are not going to take it. We are building institutions to fight your institutions. And you have global institutions, and we now have a global institution. And we are going to be out tomorrow with the biggest crowd in German history, and they're all going to be saying peacefully the same thing. We are not going to let you take our democracy away. We are not going to let you take our health away. We are not going to let you take our freedoms away. We are not going to let you take our children away. And I'm very proud of the people that I'm sitting at this table with, who are people who have the courage to challenge, to speak truth to power, and to think independently and to break away from the orthodoxies that are enslaving so much of the human race. Thank you.